more signing statements, more executive orders, more secret executive orders, uh, secrecy on lobbyists, just incredible amounts of, of, of secrecy and lying. Michelle Obama has now come out. We're going to play the video after our guest leaves us. Uh, and said that they're super transparent because you can now take selfies at the White House. So that's the type of gimmick they're engaging in. Meanwhile, Oregon launches program to tax drivers by the mile. Isn't that just a special? Greek bank uh, are in trouble uh, and are closed, and uh, they're now down to 500 million euros in cash. They're now limiting people to 20 euros a day that they can get out. Simply incredible. Obama administration has scaled back deportations in policy shift. They stopped deportations about a year and a half ago. They first denied that. Now they go, yeah, we're doing it, including felons, aggravated felons. It's no wonder Rasmussen has a poll showing massive support growing for states to ignore federal courts. And I mentioned this earlier. It's simply unbelievable. A judge has ordered a gag order. Uh, on the group that got sued for not making the gay cake, the gay marriage cake. And then he's now put a gag order out saying they can't speak to the media. So this is tyranny, ladies and gentlemen. And, and look, I'm a libertarian. I don't even get into these issues. But they've turned the whole transgender gay lesbian movement into a tyranny to destroy free speech. I mean, if you don't agree with somebody, that's fine. You can disagree with them. You can't shut them up. And if they can do it on this, they can do it on anything. And, and I mean, now they're trying to make laws in Europe where you can't criticize the central banks. Or you can't criticize EU bureaucrats who exempt themselves from the high taxes. Uh, joining us, he'll be joining us every few weeks. I'm excited to be able to have him on as a regular guest. Peter Schiff, Europac.net, manages billions successfully uh, at Europac.net. An American businessman, best-selling author. And his dad's also a famous uh, patriot fighting the IRS. And he's the host, of course, of the Peter Schiff Show as well. And he's a frequent guest on financial television programs. And generally, one of the lone voices of sanity. He'll have four or five other pundits saying everything's wonderful. And uh, he'll be on there uh, giving uh, his contrarian view, like the fact that Greece cannot be bailed out no matter how many times they do it, uh, and that more countries and areas are to come. And now, since he was on with us a few weeks ago, Puerto Rico has announced that they're insolvent. Well, I mean, guess what? Basically, everybody is, except maybe Switzerland. In fact, that's a good question, a good place to start with Peter Schiff here today. Uh, Peter, what are the best countries in the world right now? And then let's get into Greece. Let's get into this jobs report. Yeah, well, Switzerland is, is, is pretty good. They have made some mistakes uh, in kind of pegging the Swiss franc to the euro. Uh, they gave that up, but they're still intervening to prevent their currency from rising. Uh, but there are countries around the world. Singapore is another good example. Maybe New Zealand. I mean, there's a handful of places that we invest our clients' money in uh, over at Europe Pacific Capital. And by the way, now we're europac.com. Uh, I mean, .net still works, but now I've got the, the .com URL as well. But, you know, it's hard to find the country that aren't completely screwed up. I mean, most of them are broke. The irony, right, Puerto Rico is claiming that it can't pay its debts, which is true. But Puerto Rico's debt to GDP is much lower than America's debt to GDP. So we're broke too. The only difference is there's no QE program for Puerto Rico. The Fed is not buying Puerto Rican government bonds. So interest rates have already risen in Puerto Rico, and that's why they can't pay. But if interest rates ever rise in the United States, we are even more broke than they are. Now, the Fed keeps saying for years that, oh, we're going to get around to it soon, but they don't. What yeah. happens if they do? What happens if they don't? Well, we're damned if they do and we're damned if they don't, right? If they do raise interest rates, they prick, prick the bubble that they inflated, right? Because we have so much debt. The only reason the bubble hasn't already burst is because rates are still at zero. So if they move them back up to even two or three percent, which is still historically very low, given how much debt we have, it is impossible to sustain it. The federal government doesn't have the money, corporate America, homeowners, everybody is so levered up that if interest rates go up, we're Greece, we're Puerto Rico. Now, if they keep interest rates at zero indefinitely because they're afraid of causing a financial crisis, eventually the world will catch on. I mean, they haven't done it yet, but eventually they will. And then the bottom drops out of the dollar and we have a dollar crisis, which I think is the worst possible outcome. But unfortunately, it's the most probable. 
so many pundits now are starting to agree with you more. Before they said everything's perfect, it can go on forever. We are hearing a lot more noises that the big one is coming. Ron Paul was on yesterday for the first time interviewing him for 20 years. He said he thinks it's getting really close. Uh, I know they can still engage in some manipulations to keep this dog and pony show going, but it seems the writing is on the wall that uh, we're getting close here. Yeah, unfortunately, most people can't read plain English. You know, it is there uh, for anybody who can care to take the time to read it. Uh, but most people want to deny it. I mean, hopefully we can have Ron Paul's son in the White House when it hits the fan. Because the real fear is we have another one of these big government types, even from the Republican Party, who is are instinctively going to react to this next crisis exactly the way we reacted to the last one. More government stimulus, more money printing. And, and, and that's just going to lead to an even bigger disaster. What about this jobs report? <laughs> yeah, you know, they ought to call it the, the really the lack of jobs report. But, yeah. you, know, you know, on the surface, everything is great, right? We created 220,000 jobs. But, you know, what they don't really talk about on the, the uh, you know, the network news is, well, number one, they, they reduced the previous estimate two months by 60,000 jobs. So they weren't as good, the reports weren't as good as they originally told us. But if you look beneath the surface, the unemployment rate dropped to 5.3. But it's because, what, 600,000 people left the labor force. It was a mass exodus. The labor force participation rate plunged to 62.6. That's the lowest rate since 1977. And these are not older people who are retiring. These are 20 to 30 year old guys who are leaving the labor force. I mean, they're not retired, they're unemployed, but they're not counted as unemployed because they're no longer part of the statistics. So it looks like the numbers are good, but they're awful. Meanwhile, the people who do have jobs, these are part-time jobs. Again, another month where we destroyed full-time jobs and replaced them with lower paying part-time jobs. Well, anybody who's got friends and family knows that on average, people are doing a lot worse than they were 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Most of the country looks like it was bombed out or something. Um, there's still selectively some good areas in the economy, uh, but I just can't imagine what it's gonna look like when things do go belly up. Let's specifically talk about Greece and the, quote, contagion. Uh, my issue is, no matter how many times they get bailed out, it's going nowhere. And now the IMF and the World Bank and the EU, uh, the uh, Troika, they want them to put higher taxes uh, on their tourism and stuff that's already really high. That'll just stall the economy more. Yeah, look, it can't work. You have to admit the obvious that Greece is broke and trying to come up with ways to pretend that they can pay the money back isn't going to work. They, they never should have bailed them out the first time. All this is is kicking a can down the road. But you know, eventually you run out of road and that's really where we are when it comes to Greece. Everybody has to admit that the debt cannot be repaid. But also all the bailouts are meant to bail out the politicians. Greece has to change. Greece has to level with their citizens that they can't get something from nothing, that they've run out of other people's money and that people have to actually get legitimate jobs. They just can't collect checks from the government. They can't be overpaid. They need a market-based economy. But all the bailouts perpetuate is the socialism that has ruined Greece. You know, I went back last week after we talked and did some research on the Greek economy, and it's it's not been doing good for over 100 years. But at their best points, 30, 40 years ago, uh, they had some industry, they had lower taxes, and they weren't as socialist. But you're right. Uh, government wants people dependent, and big corporations, on average, want to be able to get government contracts and, and have government shut down their competition, so they go along with big government. But then it creates just a giant mass of people that want more, yeah. more, more. And, and then, and then this time when stuff collapses, they're not going to know how to work. What's going to happen? Yeah, look, you know, there's one industry in Greece that is thriving, and that's shipping. And the reason that Greek shipping is is such a good industry is because by law, the Greek government can't tax it. That's right. So they exempted one industry from taxation, and it's thriving. Why don't they do that with all their industries? Why don't they get the government out of the entire economy? Because they kept the government out of shipping and they dominate global shipping. And that's because an insider 80 something years ago 
uh, got that law passed so he could base a shipping company there. Yeah, and but of course, that's what you want to do. You want to base your company. Why did I move my business to Puerto Rico, my asset management company? You know, people joke, you know, about me, say, hey, Peter, you, you told us to go to Puerto Rico and now look at the problems. I didn't tell anybody to buy Puerto Rican bonds. I specifically told people not to. I don't own any Puerto Rican bonds, but I do have a business there because my tax rate is only 4%. And then my capital gains tax is zero. So I want to do business in Puerto Rico, but I'm not going to lend money to the Puerto Rican government because I know they're broke. But, you know, if they if they actually default and restructure their debt, that's going to be good for the Puerto Rican economy because they'll get out from under this debt trap. But we're the ones that ensnared them in it. We're the ones that enticed them into, into borrowing all this money in the first place. And we screwed up their economy with the Jones Act, which forces them to use overpriced U.S. ships uh, to, to trade through. And we have the minimum wage. And, you know, for anybody who's excited about a $15 an hour minimum wage, we destroyed the Puerto Rican economy by forcing them to adopt our minimum wage. So you have uh, wages in Puerto Rico that are relatively 50% of wages on the mainland, yet they have the same minimum wage. And that 725 minimum wage is effectively 15%, which is why the labor force participation rate in Puerto Rico is just 42%. You got more than 20% unemployment, and that is what the United States is going to look like if we adopted a $15 minimum wage nationwide, which is what people like Bernie Sanders wants to do. But those idiots out in California already did it in Los Angeles. And so they're going to turn Los Angeles into Puerto Rico. Well, it was Aristotle, Onassis, and others that got uh, Greece to build its shipping industry basically out of nothing. And they lobbied uh, to you know, get those laws in place um, before World War II, but also again after, after the Germans were kicked out. And it made them the center of Mediterranean shipping. And now a bunch of uh, wealth redistributors at The Guardian and others are basically calling to get rid of of the tax exemption for people that moor their boats there, not realizing how much money uh, all these people and these companies and these yachts are bringing in. It, it, it just shows the complete idiocy. Look at California, totally bankrupt, getting more bankrupt every day, and now they've passed forced inoculation laws. They're just total tyrants. Where do you expect when the dominoes start going down? And I know it varies hundreds of different yeah. ways, but, but, but in the U.S., after Puerto Rico goes down, whether it's this year, next year, whenever, what's next? California? Yeah. I mean, we know Michigan yeah. already went under. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, Alex, you, you, you know, any idiot can redistribute wealth. The hard part is to create the wealth in the first place. And the redistributors simply get in the way of wealth creation. That's what benefits people, right? Not, not somebody that's trying to steal money and spread the wealth around. It's the people that create something out of nothing. The entrepreneurs, the businessmen that figure out how to satisfy human unlimited desires with limited resources, and they give people the things that they want at lower and lower prices. That's capitalism, that's freedom, and government works to undermine this. And but, how you know, can people arrogantly demonize it when anyone who studies history knows. I'll tell you why. We went out and talked to UT students. Six out of ten had no idea what July 4th even is or Independence Day is. Uh, and of the four that did, only two had a good idea. In California, we had a reporter go out, Mark Dyson, do it. And it was even worse. Eight out of ten had no idea and thought it was secession from the South. I mean, uh, look, well, I know you're an optimist about, you know, things getting better once uh, we have a correction, but what do you do with some of the dumbest, laziest people the world's ever seen? Well, that's the problem. All those dumb, lazy people are voting, you know, and that's, you know, that's part of the failure. We used to be a republic and now we're a democracy and, and, and that is a big problem. And our founding fathers, when this nation was first conceived, it was conceived as a republic by people who understand the evils of democracy. And unfortunately, their worst fears have been realized, which is why, you know, I always celebrate the 4th of July with mixed emotions. I love the, the idea of the holiday and what we commemorate Right. But it also makes me reflect on what we've lost. Oh, I because agree. This country is nothing like it was. And we are now oppressed by our own government to a degree that King George in England never could have conceived. And our founding fathers, were they able to look into the future and see the lives that we're living today? They never would have fought the revolution. They would have stayed with the, with the king. Uh, but I want to get back to your, your earlier point about, you know, when is this going to happen? I think, you know, the, the dominoes are falling, you know, Greece. Puerto Rico, the, you know, the countries that have borrowed too much, right, are being held accountable. The chickens are coming home to roost. What's next? And we Spain? got more chickens out there than anybody. 
What's next? Spain? I mean, what do you see next? <laughs> well, look, I, 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 I'm more worried about the United States right? Really? because we're we're the biggest debtor. And right now, people worrying about Spain or Portugal are loaning more money to us even though we're more indebted than Spain or Portugal. That's how broke we are. The only thing keeping us afloat is the illusion of, of economic health and the fact that we have these 0% interest rates, but that illusion is gonna be pierced. It's like you know a mirage out in the desert. I mean, eventually you get to the mirage and you realize that there's nothing there, right? You reach for the water and you got a handful of sand and you, know, you, you can't drink that. I think the day of reckoning is coming. I think people have to prepare for it. You know, your listeners are preparing for it. Prepare for it like it's gonna happen tomorrow. And if you're lucky, it won't, but at least you're prepared. You gotta get out of Dodge, you gotta get your money out of dollars, you know, out of you know US financial assets. We talked earlier about the countries that are not making these mistakes. There are solvent countries that are loaning all the money that everybody else is borrowing, that are producing all the goods that everybody else consumes. There are countries that still have relative freedom on an economic sense. I'm not talking about a political sense. Sure, tell us, tell us who's really good, and then what about the dragon? What about China? Is it a basket yeah. case? No, it's not. I mean, look, you know, we got lots of political freedom, right? You can go out and complain all you want in the United States, but do you have real economic freedom? Absolutely not. The government controls you. We have a command economy, a centrally planned economy. I feel that every day as an entrepreneur here, the weight of government is very heavy on my business. I know that in places like China, there is a lot more free market capitalism going on beneath the surface in communist China than there is in supposedly capitalist America. You know, they have a bad monetary policy. They're printing too much money to prop up the dollar. But look, go, go to Walmart. Go look at all these products. Look at where they're made. How did they make them in China? They have to have factories. They have to have machines. They have to have skilled laborers, right? All we do is print money. What does that take? Nothing. In fact, most of it isn't even printed. It lives electronically, you know, sure, you know sure. in, 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 in a cyber Isn't space. it really a Mexican standoff, though? Because we've got nuclear weapons. They've got it. They, <laughs> they're our second biggest owner of the debt after the Federal Reserve. Uh, and... They know that if we go under, they go under, and if they go under, we go under, so we're both propping each other up, but the house of cards is starting to wobble. I don't think that's true. I think we, if we go under, they prosper. See, I, I think it's not a symbiotic relationship, but more of a parasitic one. They just haven't figured it out that we're the parasite and they're the host because it's a one-way relationship. They keep lending us money that we can never pay back, mm -hmm. and they keep giving us products that we can't afford. I mean, why don't the Chinese keep their own money, invest it in their own economy instead of buying our treasuries? And why don't the Chinese citizens consume their own goods? By the way, that's a good point. Us? People uh -huh. love to demonize China because their goods flood everything, and a lot of them are cruddy. But at the same time, we're the ones buying cruddy products that break. Yeah. We're the ones buying Chinese products. And we're the ones buying real goods with fiat dollars. So it just goes to say we'd get a bunch of stuff that breaks before you get it out of the box. Uh, because we're buying it with, well, look, with the, imaginary the, confetti. Look, the Chinese products are not are not you know junk. I mean, if they were junk, people wouldn't buy them. The reason that so many people want Chinese products is because they're not junk. You know, we used to make those great products. We used to be the manufacturers of the lowest cost goods in the world. That's what America did. We produced, we mass produced high quality, low cost goods. The high cost stuff was made in Europe. Yeah, we, we used to be China. You're right. Stuff. We used to be right. known for good. I mean, I yeah, don't think Chinese goods are as good as Americans say in the 50s, but I do get your point that they have a lot of great products, but the toys and other knickknacks and stuff, I mean, they break really fast. Right, but what, what toys do we make? I mean, if, 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 our, if my kid had to play, pay, play with American made toys, he'd have no toys. He'd have nothing to play with except, you know, the things around the house. No, so the only reason our kids have toys is because the Chinese make them. If we had to make the toys, only the rich, only the rich kids would get toys. The fact that the middle class has anything is because we get it from China. But all those days are going to come to an end when the Chinese come to their senses and stop buying our treasuries and let the dollar tank, which is why our, your listeners, my clients, need to be prepared now. That's what we're doing, getting people out of their dollars, buying quality stocks and bonds and hard assets around the world in advance of this day of reckoning, which I think is you know around the corner. Well, like you said, if you're in Greece or... All these other countries, it's already here. Look at the Middle East collapsing, oh, yeah. Africa collapsing, Latin America is collapsing. Look at Venezuela. Look at wealth redistribution there now. It is in full collapse.
Yeah, and think of it, remember when the real estate bubble first burst and it started out in subprime and they said, oh, don't worry about it, it's contained to subprime. Yeah, it wasn't contained at all, right? It was all over the mortgage market. So we're seeing these problems in places like Puerto Rico or Greece. It's not contained to those countries. All the countries that have borrowed too much money that they can't afford are gonna have to be held sure. accountable for what they've done. Just like all the mortgages, even if you had good credit, if you borrowed more than you could afford to repay, you know, you still lost your sure. house. Sure, what state's in the most trouble, Illinois or California? I mean, we know Michigan is essentially a beautiful state, but has fallen apart. Oh, and it's not just the states. It's, it's the cities, it's the, the municipalities, and it's the federal government. I mean, we got problems on top of problems. The only thing keeping all these cities and states afloat is the fact that interest rates are at zero. See, I think before the dollar collapses, the Federal Reserve is going to launch QE4. It's going to expand its asset purchases, and the Federal Reserve is going to be not only buying U.S. Treasuries, but state bonds as well. Who knows? They might even end up buying the ones in Puerto Rico, but they're going to buy California bonds. They might start buy buying Illinois hamburgers. Bonds, they'll buy Connecticut bonds. They might start buying hamburgers from McDonald's to prop them up. <laughs> well, you know, and all the, McDonald's has been having a tough time if you look at their, their earnings. Even the McDonald's customers are too poor to shop there. I mean, the, the, the real American businesses are struggling. You know, people are wondering why are Americans not spending? Because they're broke. Because they borrowed too much money to buy stuff in Peter, the past. I know you got to go, but do, to buy stuff now. do five mm -hmm. more minutes with us on the other side, if you can, on the all election. Right. I want to come back and talk about the election with you, and then we're going to get to your phone calls. Uh, everybody that's holding, Paul, Ronnie, James, Mike, Adam, and others. Our guest, you can go to his website, europac.com or europac.net, and check out a lot of the interesting information that's right there. He's going to be leaving us here in a few minutes, and I will go directly to your phone calls that have been pa patiently holding. I am your host, Alex Jones. If you just tuned in, we are live. I'll be live this Sunday as well, 4 to 6 p.m. So thank you for tuning into the Friday broadcast. We'll know a lot more after this vote uh, on whether the Greeks are going to pay the debt or not. Either way, the euro is in deep trouble, in my view. But again, the United States is in deep trouble as well, but we're in this Alice in Wonderland situation uh, Peter, you got cut off by the break. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about the election and where it's going. Of all the candidates, uh, who do you like the best? But yeah, you know, even if the Greeks vote to pay the vote to pay the debt, they're just voting to pretend to pay the debt because they will never pay that debt. They're just going to go deeper into debt. But yeah, you know, I, I like Rand Paul. I mean, I've been a big supporter of both Ron Paul and now Rand. I, you know, was supporting him when he ran for Senate. He you were his dad's uh, financial advisor. Uh yeah, I campaign. was an economic. I was officially an economic advisor to the 2008 campaign, not the 2012 campaign. But the first uh, campaign for president as as a Republican was 08, and uh, I was an economic advisor there. But I supported. Uh, ran when he ran in 2010. I ran unsuccessfully in the same year in, in Connecticut. He ran in a more friendly state in Kentucky, and he's in the U.S. Senate now, and I think he's done a good job. But more importantly, you know, I trust his his understanding and I trust his 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 commitment and his integrity to hold true to his principles in a crisis. And I think a crisis is coming and he's a guy that we really want to have, you know, at the helm of this ship. Uh, when we hit the iceberg, you know, because most of the other candidates have no idea what to do and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll just sink it, you know, so having, having ran there, I think would be very, very important. So I, you know, I, I wholeheartedly support. Sure. I mean, I mean, look at Donald Trump. That's the big story the last few days. And look, I think Donald Trump's in there for publicity. I think Donald Trump will drop out at an opportune time, hand it over to Jeb. I think that's what his job is. But a lot of what he says is absolutely true. I mean, I like the statements that come out of Donald Trump's mouth overall. And he's an interesting guy. I mean, I'm not an enemy of the guy. I, I just know he's an establishment, you know, uh, shell. No, I, I agree with you that, you know, and I don't, I mean, I've met him a couple of times, but I don't really know him. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that he says, I agree with. I mean, some of the stuff I totally disagree with, but he says a lot of things that other people are afraid to say because, you know, they actually want to get the nomination. And so they can't say these things. But if you're, if, if, if he can have a lot more fun because he can speak his mind, he can speak freely. And a lot of people are going to be turned on by that. But of course, a lot of people are going to get turned off. And it, you know, obviously, makes it very difficult for him to actually win. But I agree, you know, I think he's going to enjoy uh, being 
in, in on this. He's going to enjoy this. Well, that's why I raised this, because AP has the headline, uh, Hispanic leaders uh, want GOP leadership to condemn Donald Trump's idiocy. We're not saying that Mexicans are all criminals. What we're saying is, from all over the world, criminals run here because they can operate under aliases. And then we're a giant dumping ground now for uh, moms with kids, women to come here to have babies from all over the world. CNN advertises, you know, how Chinese women are now the biggest immigrant group to come here to have their babies yeah, like it's a good you know, thing. And Alex, I feel sorry for those babies. Their mothers are sticking them with U.S. citizenship. That's a curse now. I mean, we're, we're going to, the U.S. government's going to tax them for the rest of their lives no matter where they live. I mean, they're better off with a Chinese passport than an American no, passport. No, I get your but point, but I mean, it's just pure... It's just pure craziness that he tells the truth that we're now the point of, you know, uh, travel for criminals. He points it out. It's all over the news, the numbers. I mean, where they let 36,000 felons in the oh, last yeah. year. The point, the point that Trump was making, he was saying, when he's talking about people coming across the Mexican border, he is not just talking about Mexicans. It's everybody else sure. that makes their way into this country through that porous border. So he's not hes not saying Mexicans as a people. It's just anybody that comes Oh, I know. And, and, and he border. said that. And it's clear what he said. Yes. And it's true. But they spin everything like, you're against Obamacare. You're racist. You don't want to turn your guns in. You're racist. I mean, how far can this political and uh, correct garbage go? Look, yeah, well, look, why don't we just take, why don't we just elect Caitlyn Jenner? As president, just to prove how how tolerant we are, you know that will show that we're not that we're tolerant, not uh, not homophobic or or racist. But you know, but I don't blame our nation's problems on 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 immigrants. You know, I mean, if we had a free market, we didn't have a welfare state. I say anybody who wants to come, come in. I, I mean, agree. come in and work. But it's the welfare state that's the problem. It, you know, it's the it's the war on drugs that's the problem. If we had a a real free market, look, all four of my grandparents came to this country as immigrants, but they had no welfare, they had no food stamps, they had no Obamacare, they had no minimum wage. All they came for was freedom, and that's all they got. They didn't get any help from the government. They just got left alone by the government. And let me and guess, I bet they, they became successful. Yes. I mean, they didn't become rich, but they had better lives than they would have had had they stayed in Eastern Europe where they had plenty of government. Well, it's, it's just... <laughs> fantastical to see how far this house of cards can be built it's like yurtle the turtle but at some point uh, a gasket's going to blow and i think we see the rumblings of that now well peter schiff thank you so much for joining us look forward to speaking to you again oh uh, looking forward to it remember uh, the first and the third friday of every month i'll be uh, be right on, i'll be guest on your show looking forward to I'm it i'm super excited thank you so much for coming on with us